major scientists that were involved with the gas laws, okay? So before we do that, let's just talk real quick and review temperature. And I have a quick way of switching between Kelvin and Celsius that's going to help you so you get it right every time. So in 1848, Lord Kelvin assigned this number, negative 273.15 degrees Celsius, as absolute zero. Well, what is absolute zero? Absolute zero is supposed to be that temperature where everything comes to what? A stop. A stop where everything comes to a stop. That's when your average kinetic energy is equal to zero. And if your average kinetic energy is equal to zero, there's no movement, there's no motion. When dealing with the gas laws, we are only going to use Kelvin. And I'll explain why in just one second. To switch from Kelvin to Celsius, instead of using 273.15, we're just gonna use 273, okay? And so if you're in Kelvin and you want to, or you want to switch from Celsius to Kelvin, you're just gonna, simply gonna add 273 to your Celsius temperature. If you're in Kelvin and you want to go back to Celsius, all you're going to do is subtract. A really easy way to remember it is this. C comes before K in the alphabet. If you're trying to get to Kelvin, you add 273. If you're going backwards and you want to get from Kelvin back to Celsius, you're going to subtract 273. And it's that easy. Okay? So that's, it's, it's as simple as that. Why do you think that we only use Kelvin? Well, Celsius goes into the negatives. And there's also a very common number that we would have issues with if we're doing algebra. What number is very common with temperature in Celsius that we get all the time? Zero. Zero, zero Celsius. And when you're multiplying and dividing, what's wrong with zero? It doesn't do anything. Everything turns into zero, and it's incorrect, OK? So instead, we don't use Celsius. We only use the Kelvin scale when we're doing calculations. What that means is they may give you a temperature in Celsius. To do the calculation, you have to switch it into Kelvin. Then they may want your answer in Celsius. You have to switch back out into Celsius again, okay? So you'd have to switch into Kelvin and switch back out when you're done using your, your algebra, okay? So just keeping that in mind before we start here. So this is in Kelvin. I want it in Celsius. What do I do? Subtract, subtract 273. So going from K back to C, you're going to subtract, which means we're going to get what? 20 degrees Celsius. This is 24 Celsius, so if I want to go up to Kelvin, what do I do? Add 273, and what do you get? 297 Kelvin. Now we're at 310 Kelvin. I want to come back to Celsius. What do I do? Minus 273, and what do we get? 37, 37 degrees Celsius. And last one, we're at 10 degrees Celsius. We want to go up to Kelvin. What do we do? Add 273, and what do we get? 283 Kelvin. So just to make sure that you know, and Kelvin, you don't use a degree symbol, where Celsius we do, okay? So this first guy, his name is Boyles. And Boyles was an Anglo-Irish chemist, and he basically started studying pressure and volume relationships. What he ended up studying was, he was trying to see what the relationship was between volume and pressure. And the only thing that you need to make sure of, though, is that temperature is held constant, okay? So you're only going to look at one variable changing one variable at a time. The other one would be held constant, okay, when we do the gas laws. Otherwise, we need math in order to figure it out. So if you're given temperature, volume, and pressure, you need a calculation because things could go differently depending on is your temperature increasing or is your volume increasing. And so that can change things. All right. So let's take a look at this video right here. Uh, um, this is a Boyle's Law demonstration. So just real quick to see what Boyle's happens. Law, we'll place a balloon in a vacuum bell jar. We'll apply a vacuum which basically pumps out the air in the bell jar. The pressure outside the balloon will be greater than pressure inside. The balloon expands to try and equalize the pressure. Volume and pressure are inversely related to each other. When we release the vacuum, the pressure increases and the volume decreases. Okay, so inside of the vacuum, what ends up happening is, what do you know a vacuum is? You're getting rid of? Air, right? So you're getting rid of the air molecules, meaning you're decreasing your pressure. And when you decrease the pressure, when you get the vacuum, when you start the vacuum and you start getting rid of all the air, the balloon ends up expanding, okay? And so it's trying to meet that outside. So by de what would we say the relationship is then? So we said that when we decrease the pressure, our volume increased. How would you say that relationship is? Inverse. Inverse. Perfect. So, so we say that these vary inversely with pressure, okay? So volume and pressure inverse. In other words, as 
your pressure increases, your volume would be decreasing. So if we're looking at equation, at an equation, here's how the equation works. Let's just plug in some random numbers here. Let's use a pressure of one zero atmospheres. Okay, let's make it 1.0 atmospheres. And let's say that our volume, let's make it two liters. Let's make it two liters of a gas, okay? So this is representing original, original pressure, P1, and original volume, V1. And it's equal to, let's say that we double our pressure and we make it 2.0 atmospheres instead. And the question is, what happens to your volume? Well, this is simple algebra, right? Because if that's X, how do you solve for X? What do you do? You would multiply these and do what to that? Divide. Divide. Perfect. So if you plug this into your calculator, 1 times 2 is 2. Divided by 2, what do you get? 1. one. Your V2 is equal to 1.0. Now our atmospheres would cancel out when we divide this over, so that cancels out. What unit are we left with? Liters. Now, does it make sense? Well, when we doubled our pressure, our volume actually decreased in what? Two. In half. Perfect. It decreased in half. And so we know that as one went up, the other went down. And so that's the equation that Boyle ends up coming up with. And we'll do a demonstration with that um, later on as well. Okay. Next one. Charles. So Charles was a uh, French physicist, and then he was a balloonist. Balloonist like hot air balloon. So he got to play around in a hot air balloon and figure out how that worked. And what he ended up studying was volume versus temperature. How does volume change when the temperature is changed? So let's take a look at this video. Let's play this one. Okay, so these are balloons. A uh, wiener dog, a poodle, a swan. So we've got different balloons. And then we've got a beaker of liquid nitrogen. And so this is really, really, really cold. Okay? So he's going to put these balloons in there. Oh, what happens? What happens? It shrinks. It shrinks quite a bit. Now the question is, what happens when he takes these out of the cold and they start to warm back up again? Oh, they start to expand again. Okay. So what that means is, as we decrease the temperature like he did in the liquid nitrogen, what ended up happening to the size of the balloon? It also decreased. So what's your relationship? If one goes down and the other one goes down, we call that? Directly. Yeah. Directly related. So that means that volume is directly related to temperature. But it's over a limited range because what happens at low temperatures? Well, if you could decrease the temperature enough, guess what happens to your gas if you decrease the temperature enough? What do you know that gases will do at really, really low temperatures? They'll actually turn into what? A liquid. And we see, we call that condensation, right? Mm -hmm. So your gas can actually turn into a liquid. So gases will condense to form liquids. So if your temperature is low enough or if your pressure is high enough, if you have high enough pressure and your molecules are close enough together, they'll actually form a liquid because the IMFs, the intermolecular forces, start to take effect as well. Gases will assume the volume of their container. So remember, the volume of a gas is simply whatever the volume is of what? of its container. Awesome. Whatever the container is, that is the volume of the gas. So if you have a 250 mil flask and then you open it up and you have the door sealed in the room, whatever the volume of the room is, that's your volume of the gas. Okay. So volume of the gas is always equal to whatever your container is. Now your pressure could change. You could have a different pressure, but the volume is always whatever the container is. So let's try out his equation. Let's say that we have an original volume, again, let's use some easy numbers. So let's say that it's 1.0 liters, okay? So that's our original volume. And our temperature, standard temperature is 273 Kelvin, which is what in Celsius? What would that be in Celsius if you were to go back? Zero. zero. That would be zero degrees Celsius. That is what standard is. But let's say we're at room temperature. Room temperature is about 25 degrees Celsius, but we can't use that in the equation. What would 25 degrees Celsius be in Kelvin? Do we add or subtract if we're trying to get to Kelvin? Add. Add. So add 273 to this, and we get 298 Kelvin. So let's say our temperature is 298 Kelvin. And equal to, let's say that I want to find out what my new volume is. So I want to figure out what actually happens to my volume 
if I increase my temperature, and let's say that we increase the temperature to, I don't know, let's make it 400 Kelvin, okay? So let's make our temperature go up to 400 Kelvin. And the question is, what happens to our volume, okay? Well, we know that they're directly related, so if we increase our temperature, what should we expect our volume, what should we expect our, to happen to our volume? Increase. It should also go up, okay? The question is, how do you do the math here? If this is X, you know to do what? Cross multiply. Cross multiply. But I don't want you to write anything else down. Once you have this, you could do this, okay? So do your cross multiplication as if you were going to cross multiply, but then don't cross multiply, okay? The easiest thing to do is always start opposite your unknown variable. So find your unknown variable. You're not going to start on this line. You're going to start on this line, and you're going to multiply. So always start opposite your unknown. You're going to multiply these. Guess what you do to the one that's attached to your unknown? Divide. Perfect. So in your calculator, what you're going to type is... 1.0 times 400, and then the one that is attached, you're going to divide by the 298. Okay. And let's see what you get. So we have 1 times 400 divided by the 298. Um, I get, what do you get, 1.3? 1. 1. Let's use two sig figs because of the 1.0 there, so 1.3. What would my units be? Well, my what happens to my Kelvin here? They cancel out, and what are you left with? Liters, okay? So in this case, it would be 1.3 liters. And because it's volume, it should be in whatever the, the other one is, all right? So did our volume increase? Yes, all right? Last one. Last one is Gay-Lussac's, okay? And it's actually two people. So they, what they worked on was temperature and pressure. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this FET simulation. So first thing is, I'm going to add some molecules inside of here. So I've got some molecules in there. And what I'm going to do is we see that there's a certain amount of pressure that's in here. So let's just wait for the pressure to stabilize just a little bit here. So it's at around 1.30. I know it's hard for you to see. It's around 1.34, 1.35 it looks like atmospheres. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the heat. So let's add some heat to this and then let's check to see as my temperature rises, what do you notice is happening to the pressure dial? Increasing. It's increasing. Now I'm at like 3.31, 3.23, okay? And so we're going to keep on increasing this, increasing the temperature. What may happen is your pressure gets to be so high that what could happen? It explodes. Yeah, it could actually explode, okay? That's if the volume, this guy's having a hard time holding this. If the volume was, oh, there it goes. If the volume was small enough, it, but you would want to hold the volume constant. You wouldn't want to change the volume. You would simply want it to be temperature versus pressure if you're doing Gay-Lussac's, okay? All right, so let's come back here. So what we said was, when we increased the temperature, what ended up, hap what ended up happening to those molecules? Well, they gained what? Energy. energy. Kinetic energy is what they gained, right? So their average kinetic energy goes up when the temperature increases. The molecules are moving faster all around and hitting up against the sides. And so you're, when you increase the temperature, you also increase what? And the pressure on the inside. Awesome, okay? So what they ended up finding was as your temperature increased, your pressure also increased. So what do we call this relationship? Directly, directly related. It's also directly related. And so, same thing with the problem. I just want to try one thing with this. So let's throw a pressure in here. Let's make it one atmosphere just to make it easy again. And let's make our original temperature again. We can go with 298 Kelvin. And then let's set it equal to, let's say that we know the pressure. Let's say we know we're doubling the pressure and we make our pressure two atmospheres. And let's say that we want to figure out what our final temperature will be. Well, we said if you increase the pressure, then your temperature should have been doubling. So let's say I wanted to figure out what my temperature would need to be for my pressure to double. How do you calculate T2? Well, it's the same thing as there. We're still going to what? Cross multiply. Cross multiply. But you always start opposite of your unknown. So instead of starting on this line, I'm going to start here and do what? Same multiply. thing we did before. You first start by multiplying, and then what do you do to this number? Divide. Divide. So in your calculator, all you're going to do is you're going to do 298 times 2 divided by the 1.0, okay? So what do we get when we do 298 divided by 2? 596. Yep, 596, awesome. And so if you wanted two sig figs, then that would probably be 
600, which is kind of hard to do. Do you remember what you do if you want that zero to be significant? Put a, put a bar over it. Or you can write it in scientific notation. So that would be 600. And what would the units be if it's temperature? Kelvin, what if I wanted Celsius? Subtract 273. Awesome. Okay. And last thing is these were all merged into one. Okay. But I have a way of remembering all three of these. So everybody down here, um, we're not going to do this just now, just yet. We'll do this um, later. Everybody write the three guys. Write boils. Write, and then we're going to write something to the right of it. Write Charles. And write Gay Lusax. Okay. So what we're going to do for boils is this. We're going to say that we boil potatoes and veggies. What Boyle's relates is pressure and volume. Boyle's law will relate pressure and volume because you'll be asked questions like which of the following is, uh, is the law that explains why something happens, okay? Charles, if you've ever seen Charlie's Angels, what I end up saying for Charlie's Angels is Charles, Charlie's Angels is on T, V. So in this case, we've got the T and the V, meaning what? What two things are temperature and volume. Perfect. And the last one is gay lucette. This one's kind of a stretch, but everybody draw a TP. Remember learning about the TPs. Everybody say gay lucette lives in a TP. Gay lucette lives in a TP. I know it's a stretch, but everybody ends up remembering it anyway. So we boil potatoes and vegetables. Charlie's Angels is on TV, and Gabe Sachs lives in a TP because it relates what? Temperature and pressure, and that's basically it for the three major, four major uh, laws in the